It is going to be a hit or miss weekend when it comes to more rain. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey will give us an update for the weekend in a moment. And we've got the latest on developing as uh, developing stories. Several dozen people found inside a trailer in a southwest Bear County area. We want to know more about the information. We'll bring it to you what we know so far. Live from case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. And we're starting with late breaking news on the south side where a police investigation is now underway. You're actually looking at a live shot of the scene. We're still working to get more information, but we do know this is happening in the 1700 block of signs. One person was taken away in an ambulance. We do have a crew on the scene and reports that bullet shell casings are on the ground there. We will bring you more information as we gather it. Meantime, a shocking discovery leads to a search for dozens of people in southwest Bear County. It was around four this morning when 60 to 80 people were found inside a tractor trailer in the 14,500 block of Quisenberry Road. That's near Somerset and Fisher Road. Stephen Cavazos with where that truck was coming from and the investigation that was underway for several hours there. It was an unusual sight in this rural part of the county, an 18 wheeler parked in the middle of this road and inside something residents here never expected 60 to 80 people waiting for up to four hours. Residents made the discovery after some heard loud banging noises coming from the trailer. When San Antonio police arrived on the scene, the trailer was already empty. Search efforts ramped up and before the sun came up, 29 people were detained. They detained 20 males and nine females. They said there's reports anywhere between 60 and 80 in the truck. Johnson says the group was waiting to be picked up, but when police arrived on the scene, that's when many took off. The search for dozens of people went on for several hours, but it's still not clear if they've been found. A towing truck later pulled the trailer out of the area, which we're told was coming from Laredo and was equipped with AC. However, SAFD did provide medical attention, water and blankets for the detainees. There's no injuries. Uh, the fire department was here just to check them out, make sure there was no injuries and they're they're doing good. Via buses were called out to transport the group to another location. Homeland Security has taken over the investigation. Now we are told that the group did consist of people between the ages of 17 and 32 years old. Now again, Homeland Security has taken over the investigation, but we've also spotted Border Patrol agents out here as well. Again, it is not clear if they have found more people, but we will continue to update this story on air and online at KSAT.com. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Also new at noon, the Bear County Medical Examiner has identified the man who was shot and killed by police yesterday. We're told he was 18-year-old Colton Mitchell Chavez. The incident happened yesterday outside of a family dollar store on Casterville Road. The officers were responding to a domestic disturbance, or rather a disturbance call. Police Chief William McManus says the officers backed up about 50 yards before ending up shooting Chavez. Moments before, they say he was coming towards him with a knife. He was shot in the chest and was taken to the hospital where he later died. Taking a look outside with live cam, it's, it's still one of those half and half days. Sometimes we see the sun, then the clouds. Will it rain, Sarah? Well, those clouds look a little heavy laden, right? So there are going to be areas of scattered showers and storms in the afternoon, but I have reduced rain chances a little bit today because of a couple of things. Now, first, what I'll do is I want to show you a look outside with live cam here. And what we'll do is we'll see that there's those puffy cumulus clouds, but then right above those puffy cumulus clouds is a layer of cirrus clouds. Now, those cirrus clouds are pretty high up there, and what they're doing is they're preventing these puffy cumulus clouds from growing in the vertical and producing some showers. And so I've reduced our rain chances in the afternoon from 60% to 40%. It's 77 degrees outside right now. Dew points are in the mid 60s, so it's relatively humid out there. And on the satellite and radar, you can see that there are a couple of showers that have popped up in parts of the hill country like Blanco County, even near San Marcos and Hayes County. And this is going to be possible for us in the afternoon hours as well, uh, but right now it is fairly quiet at about two to five. There's going to be about a 40% chance for scattered showers, potentially even a rumble of thunder or two. And wherever heavy rain sets up, we're going to be monitoring for the possibility for some flooding issues. Uh, but for most people, we'll miss out on the rain totally today. East winds at five to 10 miles per hour. Now coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about how over the weekend the rain will be hit or miss as I did today. I've also reduced reduced rain chances a little bit over the weekend as well. There will still be some areas of rain though, so I'll tell you what you can expect coming up.
Thank you, Sarah. Police say road rage led to a man shooting at another driver. Now police are sharing his picture and they're hoping that someone will help them find him. Take a look at the man police are looking for right now. Officers tell us that back on April 22nd, the suspect turned in front of the victim's car as he was pulling out of a parking lot. Then the victim honked the horn at the suspect. And that's when police say the man in the red sedan pulled out a gun and fired shots at the victim before then driving away. And officers also want to find this person, according to police, on May 20th, he walked into the Ignite Adult Store in the 2100 block of Southwest Military Drive, that's near I-35. Officers say he grabbed an adult toy, tried to leave without paying for it. A store worker tried to stop him. However, police say he threatened to stab the worker. If you can help police with either of these two cases, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224. STOP. We have a reminder that tomorrow is the runoff election where five city council seats are going to be decided. The districts up for grabs are one, two, three, five, and nine. Three of the races feature incumbents who are running for re election. The two other races are to replace incumbents who reached their term limits. If you need some more information about the runoff candidates before you cast your vote, we have some previews of the races right now on KSAT.com. We've also compiled their answers to some of our KSAT viewers' most asked questions during the campaign. The push continues to get as many people vaccinated from COVID-19 as possible. The Biden administration this week announcing a group of initiatives with the goal of getting 70% of all adults in the U.S. at least one shot by July 4th. So once you are fully vaccinating, what does that mean? The Centers for Disease Control recently updated its guidance on that. The CDC now says that fully vaccinated people can resume activities without wearing masks or socially distancing unless it is required by law or local businesses. Now, if you travel within the United States, you do not have to get tested or self quarantine. If you're traveling outside of the country, you do not need to get tested unless your destination is going to require it. But you may be required to provide a negative test result before you return back into the United States. You also do not need to quarantine upon your return. Also, the CDC asks that you refrain from getting tested if you are not showing any symptoms. If you do have symptoms or exposed to, so if you, you do not need to get tested unless you are exposed to someone with COVID-19. If you're not showing symptoms, you don't need to be tested. However, if you are showing signs of COVID-19, even after being fully vaccinated, you should get tested again. And today is our latest KSET community event. It is a day long effort to help you get informed about coronavirus vaccines. What we were just talking about for first off, we'll be holding a phone bank tonight. It starts at seven, starts at five, lasts till seven. And we're going to be providing that number for you to call later on today. And then during our KSET Q&A tonight, our guest will be Dr. Jason Bowling. He's the director of hospital epidemiology from University Health. He's going to be addressing your concerns and answering questions. You can find more information on KSET.com. So to come up in sports, we'll hear from the player who could actually be the starting quarterback for the Houston Texans. Our jobs report for the month of May is out, and the U.S. is adding almost 560,000 jobs. That's significantly higher than April, but still not as high as economists predicted. ABC's Alex Perche tells us many businesses are still struggling to fill their positions. This morning, President Biden giving his assessment of the economy. America is finally on the move again. The president speaking from Delaware shortly after the May jobs numbers were released. 559,000 jobs were added, lower than the more than 600,000 jobs economists expected. This is progress, historic progress, progress that's pulling our economy out of the worst crisis it's been in 100 years. Concerns over inflation due to the massive $2 trillion economic stimulus package. First time unemployment filings fell to the lowest levels of the pandemic last week. Still, some businesses say they just can't find workers. We definitely need to crank up with the hiring at this point in time. 
A number of big companies are hoping to entice workers, hiking wages. Costco raising pay to $16 an hour. Walmart, the largest private employer in the U.S., upping it to $15 an hour. Enhanced federal unemployment benefits won't expire until September, but at least 25 states are eliminating the extra $300 weekly payment in June and July. The White House insists this expanded unemployment insurance is essential for the economic recovery. People like Rebecca Urey in West Virginia agree. She lost her job last March. There's no way that we could have survived without the federal supplement. West Virginia's governor, like many others, believes those benefits are too generous, causing problems in the job market, arguing people can earn more staying unemployed than returning to work. Our businesses are suffering. Our businesses are pleading with our people. Research at the San Francisco Federal Reserve showed those enhanced weekly benefits had a small impact on Americans looking for jobs at the beginning of this year. And some economists have attributed the lack of job candidates to the economy being closed with COVID restrictions for so long and then nearly fully reopened in a matter of weeks. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Outside with live cam, you were shown earlier, it's still kind of cloudy. Not a lot of sun, but hopefully we'll have a chance to at least dry out a little. Yeah, and we will have to get through times of scattered rain throughout the next couple of days, but it won't be a washout like it was yesterday for us. The aquifer, though, responding so well to our recent rains. It's up three tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours, but since April 21st, it's been up 20 feet. Very impressive to see those numbers. Unfortunately, you know what's also been up? The mold. The molds are very high today, past 20,000 mold spores per cubic meter of air. We're going to talk about our chance for scattered rain after the break. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather, streaming free on KSAT TV. Go back to our top story right now. The uh, public information officer for the San Antonio Police Department is getting mic'd up. We understand that there was a shooting in this location. Let's listen in as soon as uh, they start speaking and giving us some more information about this situation. This was in the 1700 block of signs. There was a person taken away in an ambulance and we understand that there were shell casings on the ground here. It looks as though she's about to get started and uh, give us some more information about what happened. All right, guys, we ready? You good? Ready. Okay, perfect. All righty. Uh, my name is Mariah Medina. That's spelled M-A-R-I-A-H-M-E-D-I-N-A, -E and I'm the public affairs manager for the San Antonio Police Department. I just wanted to start off by saying this is all preliminary information and could change as the investigation continues. San Antonio police were called out to the 1700 block of Sign Street just before 11 o'clock today to this house right behind me. When authorities arrived, they found a man in his 30s suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. That individual was rushed to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Later, authorities were able to identify two potential suspects in connection with this case. We have detained those individuals for questioning, and the investigation continues. Uh, that's the information that we have now. As far as we know, um, the two suspects and the victim did know each other. There is no ongoing threat to the community, and that's basically all the information that I can share at this time, but I'll take any questions. Who detained the the Bear County Sheriff's Office, I believe, uh, made contact with us. Do you know the age of the victim? Uh, he's approximately 30 years old. What is this, I guess, um, how is he doing? At last check, he was in, he was in. Once again, that's an update on that shooting down there on Signs Avenue in the 1700 block. We just found out from the PIO there with the police department that the, the victim is a man in his 30s and he suffered multiple gunshot wounds. We do know that he was taken to the hospital and there are two suspects in that shooting. I believe she was saying it was life-threatening injuries in critical condition. Uh, again, two sus suspects in custody, no arrest, but they are telling us that the situation is under control and there is no threat to the public at this time. And apparently they all knew each other. So yes. they were well, all familiar I'm with I'm sure we'll other, get so. a bigger story later on tonight on case at 12 News at five and six. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, Stay tuned for rain, Stay maybe. Oh, 
we had a lot of rain, didn't we? Had we we did yesterday. Oh man, it is. Yeah. It has been about five, six weeks here. Where did we you had... know I got stuck in the mud today? Oh no, Ursula. Four wheel drive truck that. stuck in the mud. I'm sorry to hear that. I hate this rain. You know what? Come summer, you're going to be grateful for this <laughs> rain. I know. It, you know, we <laughs> usually see an average high temperature in August of 96 degrees. So keep that in mind when we're remembering how much rain we've seen over the last uh, few days. In fact, I've got to look at rainfall totals in the second half hour here of uh, the news at noon. For now, though, let's go ahead and take a look outside right now. And those puffy cumulus clouds are trying to produce some showers, although it's been fairly quiet today. And really, we only have a few isolated showers well to our north in Blanco County. 77 degrees outside at the airport. Winds are generally calm at the moment, and it's a little muggy. Dew points are in the mid 60s. 75 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 74 in Bandera, 74 in Bulverde. It's already 80 degrees in Lotus, 82 at Stinson, and 76 in Seguin. I think temperatures could rise by the end of the day, uh, by far to me, by the afternoon, late afternoon, by about 4 to 5 degrees. Uh, and looking at this satellite imagery, you can see all of those puffy cumulus out there trying to grow in the vertical to produce some showers. And some showers are occurring up in Blanco County. County, uh, even in northern Comal County, just some very brief, short lived showers. Not worrying about those at the moment to produce any kind of flooding. They're way too short lived. We've also got some cirrus clouds moving in from the uh, southwest, and that's what's helping to keep those uh, cumulus clouds from growing too tall. And so I've went ahead and reduced our afternoon rain chances from 60% to about 40%. As we get a little bit more heat in the day, we could fire off a few more of those showers. And I'm not as concerned concerned about flooding this afternoon because a lot of the heavier rain will probably stay at bay until at least tomorrow afternoon. Now a big upper level low. That's what's going to keep our rain chances in the forecast through the weekend. And I can take you through the high res future cast here and you can see that really only a few showers will possibly develop in the afternoon here. So scattered 40% and then tomorrow during the heat of the day. It's also possible to see a few scattered showers as well, but it will not rain all weekend long. The weekend will not be a washout. But where the heavy rain does set up, we will have to watch out for some flooding issues. So for the rest of the day today, around 81, 82 for the high temperature, 40% for the rest of the afternoon. And then in the evening, only isolated rain. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, cooling down to 70 degrees by midnight. Here's a look at your weekend forecast, 40% scattered. Every now and then, one of those will be on the heavier side. We're not worried about severe weather tomorrow, uh, but there is the potential if a heavy storm of falls right over you could lead to some flooding uh, because we've had in some spots around Bear County five inches of rain just from yesterday's showers uh, in storms. And then tomorrow, uh, pardon me, Sunday we will have a 30% chance for isolated showers and storms in the morning hours. And then in the afternoon, it should be warmer than what we've been dealing with the last couple of days with a high temperature in the uh, upper 80s. The best chance for rain, though, by far this weekend is going to be east of San Antonio toward Gonzales. Lavaca County and those spots there could be up to two inches of rain and then closer to San Antonio up to half to an inch of rain with any of the heavier rain showers that do develop. All right, looking at this forecast, you know, the past few times we've had the seven day up, it's been scattered showers and storms all the way from start to finish. But look at that by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, only isolated rain. So there you go. All right, look at a little better. Thank you, Sarah. Larry, I think I heard Ursula talking a little while ago about how happy she was to see that Dak Prescott had a good OTA. Was, was, did I hear that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, yeah well, I'm pretty excited. C.D. Lamb also yeah, had a C. good OTA. Right uh, there. Yeah, the second year receiver is coming off a fantastic rookie season. And in fact, C.D. Lamb says that he feels like a rookie this season. We'll tell you why. And Vikings rookie quarterback Kellen Mond is learning how to play under center. Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Yesterday, the Dallas Cowboys finished up OTAs at the Star in Frisco, giving Dak Prescott another chance to work out as he comes back from that nasty ankle injury. He was sharp and modified seven-on-seven -seven team drills, working against no defensive line. Dak was on the throwing end of the catch of the day, not pictured. He chucked the ball downfield to C.D. Lamb, who made a leaping grab over cornerback Anthony Brown for a sweet 40-yard gain. Lamb, now in his second season, says he feels like a rookie at OTAs. 
Uh, I, I'm actually, I wish I did have an OTA uh, last year. This is definitely a lot more helpful, you know, learning plays, uh, just seeing the guys just move around. And uh, I feel like the OTAs for the rookies has definitely helped a lot. I feel like a rookie just because it's my first OTA I'm going through. It's being reported by CBS Sports that the phones are ringing in North Texas with teams calling about Cowboys linebackers Leighton Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith. But calls from other teams are being rebuffed by Jerry Jones and his crew. Head coach Mike McCarthy is placing considerable value on Van Der Esch now that linebacker Sean Lee has retired. Out in Houston, the Texans are wrapping up two days of OTAs with lots of quarterback work going on without Deshaun Watson, who has yet to attend this offseason. Veteran QB Tyrod Taylor, career backup Jeff Driscoll, and rookie Davis Mills are getting a lot of work as they learn the Texans playbook. Houston signed Taylor in March as a backup plan with the status of Watson in the air due to his sexual misconduct lawsuits and trade request. Taylor, a 10-year NFL veteran, met Texans reporters for the first time yesterday, and he's ready to be QB1 for the Texans. I have high expectations for myself. I'm going to hold uh, myself to a certain standard. So coming out each and every day and performing at a high level um, is, is, is where the standard is. And of course, yes, Deshaun played at a very high level and has played at a very high level uh, throughout this, uh, throughout his career. Um, I've been a fan of his and I know him personally, uh, but the opportunity um, to be able to start here is something that I, that I look forward to. Taylor added he joined the Texans because he knows this opportunity will allow him to showcase what he can do. Rookie quarterback Kellen Mond and the Minnesota Vikings wrapped up OTAs, allowing Mond three more days to learn the Vikings playbook on the field. Mond, who was drafted in the third round by Minnesota, now has rookie minicamp and two OTAs under his helmet. One of the challenges Mond faces is playing under center, unlike his time with the Aggies. So he was asked what's the key to mastering playing under center, like Vikings starter Kirk Cousins. Uh, I mean, the key to, uh, to mastering is just reps. Um, it's just experience. Experience is the best teacher. So um, the same way you're able to, um, you know, do certain things through experience uh, throughout college, it's uh, the same way in the NFL. And um, obviously Kirk has played um, under center for a long time, been in different systems. Um, so it's really just all about, you know, foot placement, you know, foot speed, just being efficient with your feet, um, just all about angles on, on play action. And um, so that's something that I just I continue to watch on film, just watching how he's able to, uh, you know, master certain angles and, you know, making his play actions look the same as the runs. Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer says he wants Mond to be himself. Yes, learn how to be a pro from Cousins, but to be himself with his play. I'm going to watch him grow. Yes, it's awesome. Excited for him. All right, Larry, thanks. You got Thank it. Thank you, Larry. You've probably seen the videos of mysterious UFOs encountered by U.S. Navy pilots. Well, now the Pentagon is expected to address those sightings. We have details in our next half hour. Strollers, bikes, and home improvement equipment. It's the beginning of June, and the deals are rolling out. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your size, Maryland Morris with the best time to buy this month, where to look, and the deals you might want to take advantage of. Let's get outside with live cam. Oh, that's a dark cloud. Okay, so that cloud was not there 20 <laughs> minutes ago. Well, you know, it's a little trick on our eyes a little bit because that camera itself is dark. So, you know, it's creating a little bit of a dark look, but that's a great indication that these clouds want to rain and they just haven't done that yet. But as we head into the afternoon hours, later afternoon hours, we will see scattered showers out there. Uh, now, as far as yesterday goes, though, we saw a lot of rain. This is one of the reasons why we're concerned that if a heavy shower develops, it could produce some flooding issues. San Antonio International Airport saw more than an inch of rain. Floresville more than an inch and a half. Canyon Lake more than an inch and a half. Gonzales close to an inch and Seguin close to an inch. So the ground is uh, pretty soggy at the moment and zooming in even further. You can see that areas on the south side of Bear County saw quite a bit of rain. Even JBSA Randolph more than two inches of rain, more than two in Adkins and nearly two in Lytle. You see that bullseye there on the south side of Bear County. That's five inches of rainfall down there. And in fact, we have one of our photojournalists that lives uh, near that area and he can verify he got five and a half inches in his backyard rain gauge uh, from some rain out there. So the ground is soaked.
But there's some good news, and that is that the aquifer, look how dramatic this was. By the end of April, we were under stage two water restrictions, less than 650 feet above sea level. And then the steady rain since the start of May has allowed for us to rise above average and to get out of stage two and stage one water restrictions. So it's all about your perspective. I know we want to enjoy the weekend and there will be times to enjoy the weekend outdoors this weekend as rain will stay scattered at best. I'll have a look ahead coming up. Thank you so much. A new report coming out from the CDC showing a significant number of teens who got sick enough to be hospitalized with COVID ended up in the ICU. This as the vaccination rate slows across the country. ABC's Raina Roy tells us federal and state officials offering incentives to get more shots into arms. A new study from the CDC emphasizes the need for teens to get protected against COVID-19. Scientists warning parents in the month before the Pfizer vaccine was authorized for children 12 and up, a significant number of American teens got sick enough to be hospitalized with the virus. Until teens are fully vaccinated, they should continue to wear masks and take precautions when around others who are not vaccinated. 17-year-old Zoe Vincent of Ohio says her battle with the virus inspired her to get the shot. I feel like it was honestly the most sick I've ever been, so I did get the vaccine. But vaccinations are slowing down. Thursday, the CDC says just 500,000 shots were given, the seven-day average dropping below 1 million. These high school students in Aurora, Colorado, doing their part, helping vaccinate hundreds in their community with vaccine drives. Students bringing their parents, their siblings, their cousins, their aunts, and it was just a wide turnout. We're shocked by it. White House officials calling June the National Month of Action, offering incentives in hopes of reaching President Biden's goal of giving 70 percent of adults one shot by July 4th. To achieve that, at least another 18 million people need to get the vaccine. Some businesses and venues across the country requiring proof of vaccination to get inside. Cruise companies considering the same as cruises gear up to set sail once again. As officials try to boost vaccination rates here at home, they're also turning their attention overseas. The U.S. donating 80 million doses of extra vaccine to countries across the globe by the end of the month, starting first with 25 million to areas in Latin Latin America, Asia, and Africa, along with Gaza and the West Bank. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The Biden administration has tasked six humanitarian groups with recommending which migrants should be allowed to stay in the United States. This, as opposed to the rapid expulsion of refugees seen under federal pandemic-related powers. A record-breaking number of people from other countries have crossed the border seeking asylum. Biden is facing intense pressure to lift pandemic related rules put in place. The criteria being used to make their own recommendations has not yet been made public. For the first time, the Pentagon is expected to weigh in on UFO sightings in a new report. According to CNN, the report say the military will not confirm or deny the sightings made by Navy pilots were evidence of alien activity. The report is also expected to say officials can't rule out the possibility that the UFOs were new high-tech aircraft belonging to China or Russia. The man formerly in charge of the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat ID program says whatever they are, the answer could be of utmost importance for national security. What we know is that these Whatever these aircraft are, are displaying beyond next generation capabilities. They can outperform anything that we have in our inventory. The new report expected to be delivered to Congress later this month. So to come this half out, the Smithson Valley Rangers having to battle two opponents in order to get to the next round of the baseball playoffs. Larry Mears will explain that for us coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. 
Pershing Square CEO Bill Ackman confirming talks to buy 10% of Universal Music Group at $4 billion. Universal was planning to go public in Europe already, but would be public in the U.S. through a SPAC if the deal goes through. The deal would be finalized in the next few weeks, but is still not guaranteed. This would be the largest SPAC on record valuing Universal Music at more than $40 billion. And supersonic flights are on their way back to the commercial air. In this travel market, United Airlines is buying 15 supersonic jets from Boom Technology. It will be able to fly from United's hub in Newark, New Jersey to London in just three and a half hours and San Francisco to Tokyo in just six hours. United says the supersonic aircraft is expected to carry passengers by 2029. And Paramount Plus is launching a new ad-supported plan on Monday that only costs $5 a month. The new plan replaces an older $6 plan that was carried over when the service rebranded from CBS All Access. It is half the price of the premium plan and is missing news coverage from CBS, some sports content, and support for offline downloads. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Brad Smith from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Facebook says it will suspend former President Donald Trump's accounts for two years. The company says this comes after it found that he stoked violence ahead of the deadly January 6th insurrection. Facebook also plans to end a contentious policy championed by CEO Mark Zuckerberg that automatically exempted politicians from certain moderation rules on the site. Facebook says it will no longer treat material posted by politicians any differently from what's posted by anyone else. Once again, outside with live cam, kind of cloudy. We're looking at some, yeah. ooh, the dark cloud is still hanging. I know it's getting a little, a little dark. Darker, no, yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, they're getting a little heavy laden, wanting to produce some rain here. Uh, but you know what? It's, so far, it's been fairly quiet in San Antonio throughout the rest of the afternoon. We're going to be seeing scattered showers out there. Molds are very high, past 20,000 today from yesterday's widespread rain. Rain will not be as widespread as yesterday this afternoon, but you can see there's already some showers developing up in Kendall and Comal County. They're very uh, small, light rain showers, but we'll be monitoring them carefully. We're getting into the heat of the day and that usually acts as fuel for some showers. I'll keep an eye on radar and have a look at your weekend forecast coming up. I'm wearing this uh -huh. to make up for what's not going on outside. <laughs> you're bringing the sun, Ursula. I'm trying. <laughs> we have seen peaks of sunshine today and of course your beautiful outfit. And we are really going to be seeing scattered showers this afternoon, perhaps a rumble of thunder or two. But with any heavier rain showers that develop, we are going to have to monitor for the potential for some flooding issues. Uh, and uh, again, not everybody is going to see rain this afternoon, but those that do, it could be heavy at times. 77 degrees outside right now, and it's muggy out there. Relative humidity at about 69%. Uh, so showing you the radar a little bit closer to like the Hollywood Park area and the northern tier of 1604. That's actually ground clutter. So that's not uh, rain at the moment. It's just the radar beam is running into some things closer to the ground. But if you look a little to the north, you can see these showers moving through Blanco County, moving through northern uh, Kendall County and northern Comal County as well. Uh, so some showers are starting to develop as the heat of the day is rising just to the north of Cuero. We've got some showers too. They're practically stable. And that's the other thing that we're going to have to watch out for today, because if these showers can grow tall, then they could produce some heavy rain and just pretty much stay there for a while. But as I mentioned around San Antonio right now, pretty much just some sprinkles if you're seeing any rain at all at the moment and into the afternoon will carry a 40% chance for scattered showers and maybe a rumble of thunder or two. But we're not worried about severe weather today. If there's anything to worry about, it would be if a heavy rain shower fell in Southern Bear County because that would likely lead to some flash flooding issues. 79 in New Braunfels, 80 in Lotus, 76 in Comfort, 68 still in Lost Maples, and 74 in Tarpley. Here's a look at our weather pattern and the reason why we have the chance for scattered rain in the forecast through the weekend. Big upper level low that is very, very slow. It's just going to slowly move east 
throughout the weekend and even into the start of next week. So looking ahead to our future cast, you can see that this particular model picks up on some of those showers that are occurring out there right now and it keeps it scattered. 40% is the chance for rain through this afternoon with loss of daytime heating we will lose the chance for significant rain about a 20 to 30% chance overnight for showers. And so you should be able to enjoy some time outdoors this evening if you have late Friday night plans. And then once again tomorrow in the afternoon with daytime heating, we'll see some scattered showers uh, as well. 40% tomorrow too. So for the rest of your Friday, 81, 82 for the high, 40% chance for rain, only isolated in the evening. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, Saturday, 40% chance for scattered showers and storms. Again, hit or miss rain is going to be the theme for the weekend. So you can still do some things outdoors if you can stand the muddy conditions out there. And if you keep your KSAT Weather Authority app handy because you can look at the radar, you can see an updated forecast. And if need be, we'll send notifications right to your phone. Sunday, only isolated main rain, especially in the morning. 86 for the high temperature on Sunday. And the counties out to the east have the best chance to see heavy rain through through the weekend up to two inches of rain possible for areas like Gonzalez and Lavaca County. But we will see rain taper off toward the middle of this upcoming week, and that is welcome news for many. A lot of us are waterlogged, <laughs> <What's that? laughs> um, but it's been good for drought conditions, been wiped out. And as I showed earlier, the aquifer is loving this rain. Yeah, there are a lot of pluses to all of this misery. <laughs> You know, it's always tough when you uh, have to battle another team, but then Mother Nature shows up and she yeah. starts hurling curveballs at you and sliders yeah. and everything else. You're going, wow. You know, the, the positive, at least the guys got to stay another night down in Corpus. Oh. You know, I mean, high schoolers, they always That's love road fun. trips like that, right? And at the very end, the Smithson Valley baseball team playing in the 6A regional final. They came through battling Mother Nature and a very tough Los Fresnos team. We got it coming up. Lakers big man Anthony Davis gave it a shot last night in game six against the Suns. He missed game five with a groin injury and tweaked the injury on this play early in the first quarter. And he was done after logging just five minutes of scoreless basketball. And that was the beginning of the end for the purple and gold. Number one, Devin Booker was the Suns big dog last night, scoring 47 points on 15 of 22 shooting from the floor and an amazing eight of 10 from three point land. Phoenix led by as many as 29 and the second seeded Suns beat the seventh seeded Lakers 113 to 110, taking the series four games to two. LeBron James eliminated in the first round of the playoffs for the first time in his NBA career. Records are, um, if there's a record or if it's not, they're, they're always meant to be broken. So um, in, in, that, in that fashion, um, you know, it doesn't matter to me as far as, you know, not making it out of the first round. What matters to me is um, getting this team back healthy. Um, you know, me not being able to be at my full strength throughout this series, um, you know, that's my main focus. But, uh, you know, time to, to uh, you know, readjust and, and think about what the offseason has in store. Phoenix, who won its first playoff series since 2010, will face the Denver Nuggets in the second round. They beat the Blazers last night 126-115 to 115 to win that series four games to two. Smithson Valley fans packed the stands at Cabinets Field in Corpus Christi yesterday to watch the Rangers take on those Fresnos Falcons in a 6A regional final. Bottom first, Rangers with runners on third and second. Ethan Gonzalez hits a line drive to right that easily scores Tim Orgoyo, but it's going to be close for Garrett Brooks as he slides to beat the tag. 2 nothing Rangers. Same score, bottom six up to bat for Los Fresnos is Victor Loa, and he hits a hot one to second. It's too hot to handle as he beats the throw to first, and the bases are full of Falcons with one out. That's when the sky is opened up, causing a weather delay. The game is postponed until 11 this morning in Corpus, weather permitting. And yes, the game did go on this morning as planned under much better weather in Corpus. Los Fresnos scored two runs in the bottom of the sixth, tying this at two all. So top seven, Rangers answer right back, run around third base for Tim Argoyo, and he's Slices one to left field and good for an RBI single scoring Ryan Ruff and the Rangers lead three to two. Bottom seven, the Falcons load the bases with one out but can't get the job done. Rangers pitcher Brandon Taylor, who tossed a complete game, grabs the comebacker and he flips the ball to first base for the final out. Let the celebration begin. The Rangers win three to two, advancing to the state tournament. I'm, it was something, it was different. I've never gone two days in a row like that before. So, I mean, it was definitely different, but it was a, it was really exciting knowing that I got to finish it out. Man, my thought process was like, well, first of all, whenever we first got lightning delay, I was just like, man, again, this three weeks in a row. But, you know, 
I always had some positive in my team. You know, I knew we were going to come out through. You know, I knew everything was going to be great. Smithson Valley is headed to the state tournament for the first time since 2005 and the third time overall. Last night, the Missions beat the Cardinals 9-1 for their second straight win. They had great pitching and timely hitting. They continue their six-game series at Springfield tonight at 7.05. Congratulations to Smith and Valley. How awesome, awesome Justin, is that? Am I right? Justin plays today. Yeah, softball. Justin softball. Right. Plays okay. tonight. Well, yep. Good luck to the girls today. Absolutely. All right, Larry, thanks. You got I have a had a sneak peek at SA Live. Oh, did you really? I did. I saw something hiding in a monitor. It's got a big old fat sugary donut. Oh. <laughs> 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 I was gonna say, yeah. it is a magical day oh, yes, on the indeed. show today. Although every day is magic with Mike. <laughs> okay, here's five bucks. Anyway, everything has gone high tech, you know, and think back to, you know, it seemed kind of magical at the time. Well, the high tech magician himself, Trick Watson, is here, and boy, wait to see some of this. Okay, what? That's your. Oh my goodness! That's one way not wow. to lose it. <laughs> okay. Wait till you see some of the amazing high-tech magic he's got coming up. There's even more. Yeah, I mean, stuff just like that. Okay, it's not magic to get into shape. You just have to work at it. <laughs> and you got to get the kids in shape as well, right? Yes, of course. Tanya, go ahead. Go ahead. Tanya is here, of course, with CrossFit. And you are going to put us through the paces, but this is CrossFit for kids. Yeah, so we're uh, over the summer doing a summer cycle for kiddos to make sure that they're staying in shape and active and having fun. And um, while they're out of sports, getting them ready to be strong and conditioned for their sports in the fall. And it also just helps them in general, right? You said posture, everything else. Yes, yeah. So it's functional fitness that they can use all the time. It's important to start those habits young so you can take them with you as you go. Even the kettlebells. Yeah, yes. so we're going to be doing some kettlebell swings. We better start stretching. I'm going to teach y'all yes. soon. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Big. Right. It is National Donut Day, so wait till you see these Texas-sized donuts from the Art of Donut where they are taking this sweet treat to the next level. You won't believe the incredible creation. Yeah, and that large donut is really the size of an inner tube, basically, or sure a spare is. tire. Also, what goes great with donuts? Cheese, because it is National <laughs> Cheese Day. We're going to do a little taste test here, test my palate on various cheeses, as the French would say, I guess. I don't and know. beware, Mike Osterhage may have some cheese jokes coming your well, way. So an extra cheesy show. The origin of the word cheese. Why do we want to know? Because <laughs> I'll tell you. All that and more in just a few minutes.